we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that they have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what they have done and in what they have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The priest and prophet said to the princess and to all the people, This man deserves death. He has prophesied against this city. As you have heard with your own ears, Jeremiah gave this answer to the princess and all the people. It was the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and city all that you have heard. Now, therefore, reform your ways and your deeds. Listen to the voice of the Lord your God, so that the Lord will repent of the evil with which he threatens you. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me what you think good and right. But mark well, if you put me to death, it is innocent blood you bring on yourselves, on this city and its citizens. For in truth, it was the Lord who sent me to you to speak all these things for you to hear. Thereupon the princess and all the people said to the priests and prophets, This man does not deserve death. It is in the name of the Lord, our God, that he speaks to us. So Ahikam, son of Shaphan, protected Jeremiah so that he was not handed over to the people to be put to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Rescue me out of the mire. May I not sink. May I be rescued from my foes and from the watery depths. Let not the flood waters overwhelm me, nor the abyss swallow me up, nor the pit close its mouth over me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds, he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Please stand.
Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He had been raised from the dead. That is why... Mighty powers are at work in him. Now, Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded him as a prophet. But at a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guests and delighted Herod so much that his word to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given, and he had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl, who took it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him, and they went and told Jesus. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In life, there are names that we like. Names that we wanted to be associated with. Names that are connected to some memorable and significant events in our life. Or to people that inspire us and those we wanted to imitate. On the other hand, there are also names that we do not like. The mere hearing of such name would irritate us and even destroy our mood because they are connected or associated with the not-so-fortunate events and experiences in our life or maybe a reminder of our enemies and the people who badly affected and destroyed our good life. Our Gospel today mentions two great names, John and Herod. Now, if you will be given a chance to change your name, but only be given two options to choose from, either John or Herod, which name would you prefer to take? I think and I guess most, if not all, would choose the name John. John is a good name. Indeed, it is a popular name. Children, great men, presidents, and popes are named and took the name John. Many schools and places, religious institutions and communities, orphanages, and hospitals had been named after John, John the Baptist. Why? Because John 
is a biblical name, a holy name, a name of a cousin of Jesus, a name of a prophet, a name of a martyr. It is a name associated with a person who stood, followed, and defended the truth, even to the point of being killed. On the other hand, Herod is a name barely used. It is a name despised and hated. You may sometimes hear the mention of such name, especially from people in the burst of their anger and hatred. In my life, I never met anyone named Herod. I have not also known or heard a school, a religious institution, a community that dare to call themselves after Herod. Why? Though the name Herod is also a biblical name, but it is associated with arrogance, abuse of power, and disrespect for human life, a name responsible for the murder of an innocent man called John. It is associated also with a very insecure person. Though in the Gospels, it was mentioned that Herod kept trying to see Jesus. He was interested to meet Jesus, not to welcome and befriend him or to become his disciple, but he had a sinister plan, that is, to eliminate Jesus whenever he got a chance. Because to him, there should only be one king, and that could not be Jesus, but him. The character of John and Herod can be present and reflected in our lives. We can be like John, and we can like Herod as well. We can be Herod to others, especially when we, when we do not care and respect their rights, when all we care about is our popularity, interest, comfort zones, power, reputation, and our faces, no matter whom we hurt and destroy along the way. This was the herald on the Gospels. He did not care about the life of John. He cared more about losing his face before others simply because of the oaths he made to a girl whom, who performed a dance. We can be John too. We are John if we stand as conscience of God to others. When we never compromise what is true, what is moral and just. If we are honest and respectful, even in little things, and even though others are not. If we follow, practice, and defend the gospel values, even to the point of being hated by others. John stood by and for the truth at the cost of his life. And his critics and enemies could not tolerate him inasmuch as he disturbed them so badly. Now, as Christians, as followers of the Lord, we ask ourselves, are we like John? Or are we more like Herod? Where do we stand? By which name do we want to be known and remembered? We now stand and offer our prayers to the Father. Gathered together in Christ, who conquers all evil, let us come confidently to the Father with our prayerful intentions. 
In every petition we shall say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be renewed and give faithful witness to the proper values of life and so help restore a fallen world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That warring nations may learn to live in harmony and mutual cooperation in bringing peace to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may give wholehearted support in upholding the truth and in opposing the subtle influences of evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may receive the comfort of God's love from those engaged in caring for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may come to the promised everlasting home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we now pray for our individual intentions. Almighty God and Father, as we offer our prayers, we thank you for your Son, the conqueror of sin and death, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For true goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise 
as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away, the, take away sins the sins of the world, of the world have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech you, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakiisa sa ating banal na misa. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We will now have the prayer and blessing of the sick and the blessing of religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory the mysteries of life, that the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.